Hey, we are live. Welcome everyone to another episode of The Market Made Easy with the Maxwell Group. I am Kellen Hoskins with Carissa Maxwell, and today we are joined in studio by our friend Harley O with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. How are you, Harley? I'm doing really good. Super. Thank you so much for coming on here today. Um, I think that um, our Game and Fish Department is pretty pretty rad, which is why I reached out to you and wanted to have you come on our show. So, again, thanks for being here. Um, tell us and them mm -hmm. um, a little bit about what the Arizona Game and Fish Department does. So, uh, with the Arizona Game and Fish Department, we mainly manage uh, hunting and fishing and wildlife for everybody in the state and uh we also do other stuff for people that just do the outdoors mm -hmm. um we uh we manage the wildlife so that you know we got carrying capacities in mind and uh basically try and do the best that we can with the scientific data that we have um we do everything from cold water fisheries to warm water fisheries to uh camping boating migratory birds um uh, off-highway off vehicles, you know, your, your razors, your stuff like that. Um, but we try and get involved as much as we possibly can with the public. And uh, actually, the last weekend of last month, uh, we had our Arizona Game and Fish Department Outdoor Expo, they call it. Okay. And it literally has everything from fishing for the kids to rock crawling to cowboy shooting to mammal identification to you know, everything to do with the outdoors. And it's completely free, free to anybody, even parking. And, uh, you know, even your outdoor sports, your shooting companies, you know, Ruger's there, Dylan Precision's there, everybody's there. And it uh, basically all free just for people to get outdoors and be encouraged to mm -hmm. get outdoors. That's that's the yeah. big thing they put down over on, at Ben Avery, right? Yes, yes. That happens happens once a year down there, and it is massive. It's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I actually, you know, think that um, it, that's a huge part of why our clients are moving here is because of the outdoors here and what um, Arizona has to provide for, um, you know, our, our clients. So uh, when they come here and they move here um, and they experience the outdoor recreation and the lakes and the fishing and all of those things. Um, what would you say is um, some really common questions that you get from people that have no experience uh, with these outdoor activities? Um, I'd probably say a lot of it, uh, being in Arizona, we have a lot of what you'd call public land. Mm -hmm. um, your national forests, many other states, they don't have public land where you can just mm -hmm. say, I like that spot, I'm going to camp there. We have national forests. We also have state trust land, which is kind of a deeded land to the state so that your mm -hmm. recreationalist, your hunters and fishermen can access that land. But it's not there for people just to go out and go camping or to go target shooting or uh, stuff like that. It's kind of a more of a protected land for the sportsmen. Okay. Um, but with this state, uh, we kind of have a, a self-snowbird effect mm -hmm. so that we go all the way from the desert all the way up to extremely high altitudes. So in the summertime, it's hotter than the Dickens down the valley, mm -hmm. and everybody wants to get away from that. So they'll go up in elevation to you know the Mogollon Rim, to Flagstaff, mm -hmm. um, to get out of that heat. And uh, when they do that, they go camping, they go fishing. Um, there are certain uh, wildlife that can be harvested in the summer and stuff like that. But mainly it's for people to get out, enjoy the outdoors, but then in the winter time, when those lakes and everything's mm -hmm. not accessible by anything because of the snow, everybody goes down to the valley or goes down to the, the lower desert because it mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, January, February is possibly my favorite time is just to go down to the creosote bushes and mesquites. It's so gorgeous down in the valley. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's it's a the really ten months, not so much. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> after after this winter, uh, everybody's ready for summer until it gets here. For sure. Yeah. I, re I hear it all the time. You're like, oh, I can't wait for it to not be cold. I'm like, I don't think you, I don't think you remember last summer very much. Maybe yeah. is, is your, is your problem there. <laughs> um, you mentioned, you know, hunting and fishing. So you guys also manage large and small game as well. Yes. We, the, the game and fish department manages all sport fish 
and non-sport fish, uh, game game animals and non-game animals. Basically, your game animals are the animals that we take or we harvest for uh, you know their meat or their pelts or you know that we actually take all of the above. Yeah, and then the non-game is the stuff like horny toads and and smaller creatures that we don't harvest for food. You know, like your your little rabbits and stuff like that not really rabbits but you, yeah. you get my gist uh mm-hmm. so they they also do a lot of stuff like that and we call that non-game because they're not game animals for us to harvest mm-hmm. um the fishes or the fishery aspect of it is uh your game fish your trout your bass your uh catfish stuff like that is our main target as anglers because they taste good they put up a good fight you know they're mm-hmm. enjoyable to catch the non-native or the non game fish are your most part your native fish so they're mostly smaller fish um not really aggressive you get your suckers and your uh your chubs and stuff like that involved but uh, they're not really an actual target species mm-hmm. so you mentioned so our, our main game fish in arizona are essentially just trout and bass yeah for um, the most part for I the mean, most part uh our fish hatcheries mainly stock and uh, grow rainbow trout for the most part. Uh, they also do brown trout, brook trout, cutthroat. Uh, we are doing tiger trout now. And we also do Apache trout, which is uh, more on the east side of the state due to uh, we only stock them in their approved native drainages. Okay. So uh, we mainly do that. but uh, Didn't they do a stocking once at, Gold, at Goldwater Lake here in, in Prescott with the Apaches? Yes. Yeah, so, so basically the way we're allowed to stock trout and species is we are uh, approved by the feds, by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, uh, where we're allowed to stock with how many fish and what time of year and what size of fish. So um, they say we can stock Goldwater with Apache trout. Well, then they have... Uh, okayed that and everything's good to go. Um, all the trout or the rainbows that we stock now are all called triploid trout. Basically means they're genetically sterile because mm. with that we're allowed to have more freedom to say put those in a lake and if that lake gets washed out by a flood or water they won't get washed downstream and then establish a new population and eat all the native fish and keep re- reproducing there. So once that fish gets washed downstream and gets caught out by an angler or pulled out by a bird or dies in natural causes, the lineage with it dies there. So we don't have to worry about the endangered species uh, getting eaten if there are any in there. Because most of those trout species are quote-unquote invasive species, are they not? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're good at what they do, but they're not super invasive. They're not your bullfrogs, your crayfish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they do like brown trout, brown trout leave just about anything. Um, but the reason why we don't really have catfish or too much bass is uh, they're really good at reproducing in warm water. Um, okay. Right now, my facility, we actually have a Florida strain largemouth bass that uh, we're in the process of getting a facility ready to be able to spawn those fish. And once we spawn them, we can hatch them and uh, re-energize or recharge the the different lakes throughout the state with new genetics so that we can have better fish and better variants because that over years of the same fish breeding in the same pond it eventually gets small yeah you get your reduced numbers of uh egg clutches and you get your stunted sizes of fish so we can mm-hmm. reintroduce that stuff without having to bring them in from out of state hmm. so i was thinking back and i think you and i met somewhere in the neighborhood of like 28 years ago yeah. Right in that right in that ballpark. Um, what got you interested in, in doing the game and fish thing? Well, I was always a outdoor kind of guy. I always did hunting, always did fishing with my dad. My dad was in the game and fish department as a wildlife manager for, I believe, 27 years. And uh, so I grew up in the department. The department is uh, really kind of like a family to me. I know a lot okay. of the people in the department, and uh, they, they treat their employees very well. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not like a big organization that'll just chop your hand off. Um, Very cool. I really I've been with the department almost 15 years now, and you know I I I really enjoy it. So if I didn't, I wouldn't be there. It's awesome. But 
I have another question. Yes. So um, let's say people are interested in, in fishing and they get their pole and they are all excited and they go down to the lake and they start fishing. Uh, I think there's a little bit more to uh, what they need to do in order to fish. So, uh, yes. Um, depending how, how green or new you are to fishing, mm -hmm. um, the department is doing along with tons of other people in the world. It's called YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, they're, they're doing kind of how to fishing videos in short segments. So they'll show you different rigs and how to fish them. Mm -hmm. But in order to go fishing, if you're over the age of, I want to say 10, uh, you need a fishing license. Mm -hmm. So what the state did a couple years ago is they kind of simplified all their licenses. Um, kids that are 10 to 17, uh, need a hunting or fishing license if they go out, but it's only five dollars. Okay, so it's it's very inexpensive yeah. to do this, but for, it's important that you do it. Yeah, for the kids, yeah. it's five dollars. It's hunting and fishing license for adults. Uh, I can't remember what the the prices are. Thirty eight. There we go. And for a fishing license. For a fishing. Um, I think um, it's fifty five for a combo yeah. license. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. and it's nice because the department actually shifted to a three sixty five license, so it's not a January to December. Mm -hmm. you know, January 1st, your stuff runs out. No, it's 365 days from the date you choose to purchase mm -hmm. that license or set that date for the start date. Okay. And so I get my fishing license and I get my fishing pole and I go, okay, where am I going to go fish? And I'm going to Google that. And, um, I'm sure you guys have like a list of where actual fish live. Yeah, so so on a game and fish website, <laughs> there's saying. there's a there, there's a, a really big library of shows all the waters in the state, um, for the most part, give or take, and uh, it lists what species are really in there, mm -hmm. and also it, uh, you know, it it tells you what kind of they are, but what they eat, um, mm -hmm. and uh, where to go. So, uh, best thing to do when you go fishing is if you see somebody, don't be a stranger. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of approach them nicely and then ask them how they're doing, if they're catching any fish or whatever. But don't don't fish right next to them, you know. Okay, yeah, that's so, etiquette. So, so yeah, etiquette, fishing, and, yeah. Etiquette. and it's 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 really interesting because you'll be fishing, you'll do, be doing good, and people come down and they'll look at you, but they won't ask you how, what you're using or how you're fishing it, mm -hmm. and then they'll fish right next to you. And they still <laughs> won't, but, uh, you know, the, the main thing is, is everybody's out there to have fun. There's lots of fish. And fish move, you know, wherever the fish they feel like it. Okay. But, uh, you know, just be polite and, like you said, etiquette. So is there a limit on how many fish I can catch in one in one day? I mean, if I've got a, I'm on a roll. Yep. And I, I've caught three fish, and they all look like they're supposed to be trout fish. Mm -hmm. What happens? I mean, is there a limit? Yeah, so... Uh, the way they have it now is uh, they they have identification on the website and in the fishing regulation actual booklet. Oh, okay. Um, so there's a booklet. Yeah, okay. th there's a booklet. You can get them in any place that sells the licenses. Walmart's always a super easy one because it's open 24 hours, most mm -hmm. of them. Um, but that'll tell you how many fish you're allowed to keep, how many, uh, you know, in each drainage if there's special regulations. Mm -hmm. um, but like all your trout, they have combined into one number. So you're allowed to keep six trout, any combination. So you can catch three rainbows and one brown and two mm. more brookies. And then once you hit your limit, you are done fishing. So okay. you can't be like in a water that has trout and bass, catch your trout limit of six, and then say, well, I'm bass fishing now. That's kind of a moral dilemma that okay. you, you, you can try to say, but it's not going to work. Okay. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, and then like catfish, they, they group all the catfish, the channel and the flathead, they group them into, you know, I believe it's 10 fish now. And there's, that's just your daily bag. Your possession limit, like at home in your freezer, is usually double of what your daily bag is. And that basically says, so if I got a six uh, trout limit and mm -hmm. I catch six fish today, go fishing tomorrow and I catch six fish and I put 12 fish in my freezer... I'm at my limit, therefore I can't go fishing and catch any more of those fish. Because years ago, I think it was only like four or five, there was a guy on the other side of the state, they found like 1,200 frozen trout in his freezer. Oh my gosh. And they, you know, you just, it's it's meat hoarding. Yeah. You know, it doesn't last forever. No, so, yeah. no. How many uh, fish have you caught in one day, Kellen? Oh, I am not what you might refer to as a prolific angler. Um, 
I think maybe three, four in a day. You yeah. know, I mean, that's that's a pretty good day. And usually so it's, it's possible. we're going after trout. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, I go fishing and I catch like one and it's this big. You know, it's like three inches long. And I'm like, yay! <laughs> and, dinner and that that that's wonderful because you know it's it's kind of all in the eyes of of the angler or the person um one of my big things is i'll have people come up to me and talk to me about trout mm-hmm. and uh you'll get people that are saying well i don't want those dinks those small fish you know i mm-hmm. want i want big fish well i always ask them so do you like to catch fish or do you like to fish and it's a lot easier for us to grow a 10 inch fish in higher numbers than to put two more inches on that fish. It just completely reduces the amount of carrying capacity in our raceways to grow a trout that big. And Mm -hmm. let alone the feed conversion and how much longer it needs to be on station. Mm -hmm. But so you're looking at your monster fish versus your numbers of fish. I'm, I like fishing, but I like catching more. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's all in presentation. You know, you learn, you can go places a hundred times and not really fish and catch stuff. You can go there one time with somebody who knows something you don't know, and it's uh, unreal. A different lake altogether. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I fished, I fished Roosevelt Lake probably a dozen times in the last 10 years and caught maybe a total of 15 bass and catfish. I went down there last year with one of my friends and, uh, it was unreal. We hmm. probably caught 60, 70 fish in like four or five wow. hours. Wow. It, it was just boom, boom, boom. Just knowing the techniques and where to fish them. Yeah. Switching up the location, switching up the bait. Yeah. Well, in the time, right? I heard that like if you go at night, it's a lot more effective, right? Yeah. So, so there's different, different times, you know, during the middle of the day, you got your, your heavy photo period and stuff like that of light and heat. Mm-hmm. Um, and Basically, the fish are going to be out and active when there's stuff for them to eat that's out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, and I'm pretty sure that some of these areas are closed after after a certain point. Um, actually, that's a good question. So, what is the rules on being inside some of these parks, and how does that work? So, some of the lakes, like uh, your Lake Pleasant, actually has uh park hours mm-hmm. unless you're camping there so right. like your your day access and like dead horse state park in, mm-hmm. in cottonwood mm-hmm. yeah um they have since that is designated parks they can say okay we're not going to allow people in here from these hours but anything after that we really don't want a lot of public in here um but other than that there's other places that don't have your limits so like the verde river if you're on the verde or oak creek depending mm-hmm. where you're at there's no okay no hours no hours so so our facility uh where i'm at 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 bubbling ponds hatchery we have a visitor parking lot but it's basically daylight hours we give them Mm -hmm. a half hour here half hour there but uh that's that's a business we're only there on the property for so long Mm -hmm. and we don't want people there after night and everything because it is a facility but uh Hmm. yeah it's good to know We've got a, a question from our Facebook audience right now. Um, it says, if my fishing license expiration date is worn off, how do you find out when it expires? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so, um, depends where you bought it. Um, I, I always buy mine online through the Game and Fish Department's website. Um, and to do that, you create a, an account, and they call it like a portal login. And that's how you apply for the draw. That's how you get licenses mm-hmm. and stuff like that. With that login and that purchase, I'm not sure like if you went to Walmart and bought a license, I'm not sure if it uploads into that system and lets you know. But when you log in, like if I went and logged in, it would say, this is my hunting and fishing license number. And it says it's from this day to this day next year. And uh, that's possibly the best way. And they also do sell duplicate licenses. Um, okay. So that that that'd be my best bet for. Well, if you have person. an online portal, you can always go in and reprint for free too. Um, can you not? I don't know on that. Um, okay. I know it tells you your hunt license number. There might be a couple dollar the, or maybe know, there's access a, fee. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you can also go and say, "Hey, I lost my license. I need to get a duplicate at Walmart." Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I can't remember how much the duplicate license is, but it's an option. Okay. Hmm. So. Um, 
I personally have a question because my kids always want to go in the water, mm -hmm. always. Um, doesn't matter where we are. And I'm like, no, you can't go in there. It's not a swimming lake. And I'm wondering if you can give us some insight, and maybe you can, I don't know, um, as to why some lakes you can get in and swim and others you can't. And what is that? How do you make that determination in Arizona? And that's a good question. I don't know the exact answer to that. Um, okay. What, what I've always been kind of told and informed is a lot of the lakes that have uh, heavy weed growth and aquatic mm -hmm. vegetation, they don't want a lot of people swimming in there because you get tangled up in that stuff and you'll get exhausted real fast. Okay. And you hmm. get a lot of people, you know, if, if someone's been drinking or if they don't have a life jacket mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. you can get wore out real quick. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, any even somebody in shape swimming is a full body yeah, it exercise. Is. Absolutely. So, um, but I think that's that's the main determination. Okay. Um, but you know, with kids and stuff like that, I love to take my kids in the water. We go swimming in the creeks and rivers all the time. Mm -hmm. And just the main thing is, is when you take your kids out, if there's somebody fishing, give them that hundred yard buffer. Oh um, yeah. You know, because yeah, nobody don't likes swim where people are fishing. Yeah, nobody it's likes to be cool. fishing and uh, having rocks thrown in next to them, stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah, it's good to know. Cool. Hmm. Any anything anything else interesting coming up before we wrap up with, um, with game and fish? Anything that people should know? Off the top of my head, uh, I don't. I guess the expo we, so. we should um, have you on two weeks ago we, before the expo, <laughs> so we should we could have pumped that a little bit. But yeah, um, and it's the last weekend in March every year. Yeah, and it is it is hands down one of the best outdoor recreation things I've ever been to, and uh, I mean it's it's intimidating because it's massive. But mm -hmm. it is the kids down there. Just that's what memories are made of. It is it is 100% amazing. Um, the only thing, other thing I can say is uh, we are ramping up with our summertime uh, stocking schedules with trout. Okay. So all of our northern hatcheries, well, Page Springs going to be stocking, mm -hmm. uh, Tonto Creek Hatchery, Canyon Creek Hatchery, and uh, Silver Creek Hatchery will all be stocking our northern lakes in the high country. And all of those stockings can be found on our website under fish stockings. Cool, cool. And so that website is? Just azgfd.gov. Just sweet. Yep. Nice and easy. Yep. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Harley. We appreciate you coming in. Um, mm -hmm. We know you've got to go teach some more people about about this stuff. So uh, we really do appreciate your time. And, um, yeah, if you ever ever want to come back on, talk about more stuff, we're, we'd love to have you. Um, and that's going to be it for us today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. For listening, mm -hmm. tuning in each week, um, we really, really do appreciate the support. Um, and until next week, I am Kellen Hoskins with Carissa Maxwell, and we hope you're having a lovely day. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.